The battle is on. The entertainment complex, the oligarchs of commerce have decided that it is time to wage war when it comes to the direction of entertainment. Elon Musk is front and center as someone who is now under their target. He said naughty things about Bob Iger, disagreeing with the direction of Disney and claiming that customers are already boycotting the happiest company on earth. They don't care, meanwhile, that Bob Iger has lost more than half a billion dollars at the box office this month alone, signaling that the company is utterly divorced from the market. No, this is the culture war going into 2024. This is the battle of what we will be watching for decades to come. Hello folks, welcome back to the WDW Pro channel where we believe in having meaningful conversations. Today we are again explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve, this time in regards to breaking news regarding Elon Musk, Disney, Bob Iger, and a bunch of companies that are all taking sides right now as a proxy battle is developing around the Disney company and how we are going to disseminate culture not only to your children and grandchildren, but also to the rest of the world. Today we begin our journey with Brian Bushard from the Forbes staff, and yes, that means we're on Forbes.com, Disney versus Musk, right-wing ex-users push for Disney Plus cancellations as Disney pulls ads. Now, I don't know how they exactly discovered that these uh, various accounts calling for Disney Plus cancellations are associated with any kind of political affiliation, but given what we've seen with Disney at the box office, I would say that it goes far beyond the right-wing. I would say that anyone middle or to the right is probably not agreeing with Disney. Otherwise, why would they not be going to watch the stuff that Disney makes? But here's the article. Hours after Elon Musk told companies to go blank themselves for pulling their advertisements from X over concerns about uh, him being uh, a person against Jewish people, which by the way, is utterly laughable and everyone knows it. There's, there is no sane person, right? We're not talking about the people who sit there and yap up and lap up the internet and believe that whatever they read is reality. But we're talking about sane people. There's no sane person that actually thinks that Elon Musk, who just met with the president of Israel and was re was received welcomingly, if that's a word, welcomingly, there's nobody who thinks he's actually someone who is against Jewish people. That's crazy. And so no one believes it. It's just a talking point. And called out Disney CEO Bob Iger by name, a group of right-wing users on the social media platform have called for Disney Plus subscribers to cancel their accounts. Now, we here on the Pro Channel are not calling for anything like that because we don't believe that we have to. We've talked about this before. We think that there is a soft boycott that is already happening. And there doesn't seem to be any need whatsoever for people to try to organize because, frankly, the damage is already done. Disney already did this to, the, to themselves. But according to Forbes, multiple, maybe it's two, three, four, who knows? Accounts on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, called on subscribers to Disney's uh, a streaming service to cancel their subscriptions with the X account end wokeness posting instructions for cancellation with the caption stop giving money to people that hate you now I don't know maybe that is maybe that is a right wing account I have no idea those calls follow Disney's decision earlier this month to suspend its advertising on social media platforms joining a growing list of companies including Apple IBM Lionsgate and Xfinity following the release of a scathing report that found advertisements on X alongside uh, and you get it. Now, Forbes, uh, Forbes, you're trash. You're just absolute trash. And here's why you're trash. Because this, this paragraph paragraph right here, this is not just false. This is anti-truth. Because there is no way, if you follow this sort of thing, and, and if you don't, you have no reason to be writing such an article, there's no way that you can believe this. Because definitively now, we know, based on what people have discovered over the last week or so, that Media Matters, which put out this, this claim, they seem to have heavily manipulated the platform in order to make that happen. And you can't replicate it. You cannot replicate what Media Matters found because Media Matters manipulated the platform to make that so. Now, apparently Forbes has not gotten onto the, gotten onto the grift machine yet because they have not learned that the companies now are switching. They're switching quickly and uh, coming up with a new reason why they're boycotting Twitter. Apparently, nobody told Forbes. Disney's decision to stop running ads on X could cost the social media platform millions of dollars, 
while X users call for a boycott of Disney Plus would have to reach many of its 146 million subscribers to have an equivalent effect. I'm sorry, is losing half a billion dollars in a month at the box office not enough, Forbes? Is that not enough, Forbes? Brian, they lost a half billion dollars at just the box office in a month. But apparently that doesn't count. Speaking of the New York Times Deal Book Summit on Wednesday, Musk accused advertisers that left the platform of blackmailing him with money and crudely, crudely told them to uh, do something. Go reproduce, I suppose. It fails to mention that Musk also said that that was his most uh, foolish post he had ever made, that he immediately attempted to clarify it, that he apologized for posting it because it needed clarification right away. And then he clarified and said that what he was essentially trying to say is that perhaps people should not give money to groups who will then give that money to other groups that want to destroy you. That's what he said. Iger, also speaking to the summit, said he has a lot of respect respect for Elon and what he's accomplished, but took exception with Musk's, Musk's endorsement of the post. Now, folks, I'm here to tell you, this is all part of a narrative. This is what we call a pylon, and they are piling on Elon Musk in an effort to destroy him because he is providing a space for people to have an opportunity for free discourse outside of the corporate narrative. And as long as Twitter slash X exists in this way, then pressure will be on the other platforms to also hold off on dystopian crackdowns on your ability to have discourse. As long as Twitter exists, it's hard for them to completely and utterly manipulate Rotten Tomatoes because there's still a place for people to go to review movies and say this sucked. As long as Twitter slash X is what it is, it's difficult for Facebook to fully crack down on the opinions of people because, well, there's a place that people will go instead. And so X is providing a very real counter to this. Now, all of this is very funny to me because at the same time that we're talking about, you know, we're, we're ignoring the fact that the Walt Disney Company is hemorrhaging money and its stock is propped up, in my estimation, though please don't make any financial decisions, propped up essentially by a proxy war because there's two sides of the culture war battling for control of that company right now. Uh, nobody talks about the fact that it's lost 65% of its total uh, value since Bob Chapek was ousted. Bob Chapek, of course, holding the highest value ever when he was the CEO of the company, not Bob Iger. But it's all funny to me because we're, we're trying to take down right now the man who uh, single-handedly made uh, going to space a commercial enterprise, who currently has $243 billion worth of, of uh, net worth. Now, you know, folks, I'm not here to be a an Elon Musk stan. I'm not here to be the ultra fanboy of Elon Musk. I'm just here to say, maybe the guy who made the electrical vehicle market possible and feasible, and whose cars even today are really the only viable EVs. I mean, if you've got a if you've got a solely electric car that's not Tesla, good luck making road trips because of the charging situations. I'm not here to cheerlead for Elon Musk, but I'm here to tell you, maybe we shouldn't be destroying the guy who has been at the very highest level of the merit meritocracy. If you're look, I mean, when in history have we ever seen a rich person go out there and make this kind of wealth and not build mansions and the Biltmore estate and coastal ma uh, estates, you know, with 10, 50, a hundred acres of beachside while they claim the oceans are going to swallow up everybody else. Elon Musk doesn't do those things. He is bizarre. He's also at the very top of the meritocracy. And once upon a time, Hollywood knew about the meritocracy. And that's what's so bizarre right now is that Hollywood and specifically Disney, they seem to have completely lost their minds in the way that money works. In fact, we're living inside an economy right now in which people don't act as if the response by society, which we call the market, matters. Maybe we need to start a new group, not media matters, but the market matters. And maybe it needs to be a way, a wake-up call towards people like Bob Iger. Take a look at this out of The Hollywood Reporter. This is by Brian Davids. Director Andrew Davis explains why they don't make movies like The Fugitive anymore. And this really is fascinating. I want you to read this along with me. Let's learn together. Every now and then, someone on social media will lament about why they don't make movies like The Fugitive anymore. And yes, we do. Now, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to go see Godzilla later today and review it tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that because I'm very tired of bad movies. And I have had to watch a very many 
uh, a storm of bad movies this year, many of them out of Disney. So I'm looking forward to going and see Godzilla. I've heard that the Adam Sandler animation thing on Netflix is actually pretty good. So I'm looking forward to that as well. But yes, I, I do long for the days of movies like The Fugitive. With the film, which turned 30 in August, Davis accomplished the rare feat of being both a commercial and critical success, culminating in seven Oscar nominations and one win for Tommy Lee Jones as Best Supporting Actor. The Harrison Ford starring vehicle that reimagined the 1963 TV series of the same name certainly didn't set out to be the highest or third highest grossing film of 1993 or an awards darling. It's a fantastic film. If you've not seen it, you should. Warner Brothers merely strove for a base hit as opposed to swinging for the fences, something Disney could learn from today. And that philosophy ties into why the major studios no longer prioritize films with the scope and scale of The Fugitive. It started with Jaws. This is the quote. When you could make a movie that could play all over the world and have all these incredible box offices, studios wanted to invest in that home run all the time, Davis told THR. But Bob Daly and Terry Samal said, we're happy hitting doubles. What makes Davis' film all the more impressive is that its post-production process was just 10 weeks long. Yeah. Compare that to the budgets and the productions and the post-productions we've seen from more recent films, which frankly have shown themselves to be utterly unsustainable because you can't, you can't make a risk with a film that needs to make a billion dollars to break even. And when Bob Iger gets up there and says that, uh, you know, well, for any other studio, our movies would be a huge success, but we've set the bar so high. No, no, no. You have set the tab so high, Bobby. The tab. You have set it where you have to make a billion to break even because you can't control your spending. That's why you're failing. By today's standards, 10 weeks is the minimum amount of time that a director is required to have before submitting their initial director's cut. The Fugitive's case, though, the studio really wanted to capture teenagers and adults before school was back in session. Barry Reardon, who was the head of distribution at Warner Brothers, said, can you get this thing out by August 6th, Davis recalls. There were six editors, but three main editors, and I would go from room to room. It was almost like a dentist's office where I would check in on each patient. And everybody hated us afterwards because, well, if the fugitive did it in 10 weeks, why can't you do it in 10 weeks? When we showed the film to the studio, they went, don't touch a thing. We love it. And this really brings to mind, folks, you know, we've been talking for a while now about Disney and their strategy of releasing these massive tentpole movies that need a billion dollars. And there are people out there who will debate, you know, which film needs what and how you run the calculations. The bottom line is these, these films are utterly expensive with massive marketing budgets. We need to go back to movies like The Fugitive. Disney has a massive roster of properties that they could bring to the box office for less money than these CGI explosions that we watch over and over again, and which have, frankly, diminishing returns in terms of our uh, anticipation for them. Miracle on 34th Street, for example. Make that. Make it utterly wholesome. Get away from everything that is divisive and put out that little darling next year with no CGI whatsoever. Just good old-fashioned filmmaking and watch it make, who knows, $200 million at the box office on a $70 million budget and watch that make money. Do, it, do the same thing with Hocus Pocus. You put it out on Disney Plus, the sequel, and people loved it. I thought it was trash, but people watched it. Do it again. Make it for $100 million. See if you can get $200 million at the box office and call it a win. Because right now, what they're doing is unsusta unsustainable. I want to read to you uh, a message that was sent my way to wrap this video up. A message sent my way by someone who has decades of experience in Hollywood at the highest levels. We're going to hold their name for respect due to the fact that they may not want to be associated uh, with any channel. They may not want to have their name out there as having made this kind of a claim. But just know it's someone who uh, has worked on things that you love. And I think that's sufficient. But here is the message that we received. We always like to protect sources when those sources wish to be protected. And it says this, Pro, with respect, the comparison to Strange World is even worse than you have suggested in your videos, and here's what I mean. Strange World, earlier in the woke, go broke Disney era, came out proudly with its wokeisms, and the audience ran away in fear. Sensibly, and not just politically, but on the grounds that something openly advertised as an anthem of political point of view was probably not a lot of fun to sit through, even with the best overpriced popcorn. But Wish came out with no such overt pretensions or claims. Let's remember all the activist stuff that came out after the debut. That means this. The proclamation that a Disney movie, even one that claims to celebrate the great family entertainment of 100 years of a company's history and place in our cultural universe, is just without any other attributes, the latest Disney movie. 
and that's enough to scare audiences away on the same grounds, that it won't be something their family would enjoy or should enjoy. In short, where the brand of Disney used to be a guarantee, and that guarantee was the excuse the Bobs, the Bobites gave for putting politics and uh, issues of the bedroom into the movies on the grounds that the brand would bring people in to be preached to regardless, that brand has now become toxic all by itself. So, I guess in that sense, the celebration of 100 years is accurate. It is a celebration of how to take 100 years of excellence and utterly destroy the goodwill that creates in less than 100 months, 100 weeks, or even 100 days. It may be a horrible achievement, but it is indeed a record-breaking, world-shattering one. And I'll add here, for your further contemplation, this. Becoming a zombie company. There is a famous story about Schlockmeister and gore and bad stuff director Herschel Gordon, specialized in, uh, shall we say, images of women with uh, less attire, and also gory effects, making a movie about a haunted high priest or a uh, occult, making a recipe for the devil himself that requires the brains of people. You get the idea. They're shooting at night at a beach in Florida one time, and the girl they hired has one line before the bad guy kills her and takes her brains, and she could not deliver it. And this low-budget, one-take-is-all-we-can-afford little movie is now in something like Take 24 at that point. And the director said, I think we'll have to get another girl. This one has no brains. Folks, I'm here to tell you, thank you, uh, first of all, to the source who sent that. That is the situation not only of Disney today, but unfortunately of the economic intelligentsia. Those who control, to large extent, the market, who have decided that they're going to be divorced from what society wants because they know better. We should get back to movie making like The Fugitive. And we should stop attempting to destroy people at the top of the meritocracy who have created so much over ideology and over frivolous claims that nobody actually believes. The battle for what we will believe in the future, what will be in entertainment, and what will be allowed in the new uh, internet, well, it's on. We'll cover it here as best we can when it intersects with entertainment. That's what happened over the last few days. That's why we're here discussing it. But folks, I'm here to tell you, we'll stay in our lane. We're not a political channel. We're just here to cover entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe. When you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Clickbait. Fraud. Drama queen. Ugh. I wish there was a channel that was five to six minute news reads without the drama, frauds, and clickbait that could accurately let me know the current news providing my crucial context utilizing all the different That Park Place contributors and creators. Well, stupid. <laughs> huh? There is. It's the That Park Place YouTube channel, which will be going live real soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you can really stick it to the algorithms. You're joking. Nope. Ah! Uh...